Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2020 Mazda CX-5, we're gonna be taking a look at and showing you how to install the eTrailer.com Class 3 Trailer Hitch Receiver. Out of all the hitches available, this one's definitely going to be my favorite and for a few different reasons. The first big one being the appearance, how it's gonna look on the back of your Mazda. And to me, I think it looks really good. For the most part, it's gonna be completely hidden the only thing you're going to be able to see is a receiver tube opening. And the next one being that the hitch has a carbide matte black finish. So it's really going to blend in nicely with the finish of the bottom of your fascia and almost look like it belongs there. Another reason I really like it is because it's going to be really versatile. It's going to be a class three hitch. So it's going to give us that two inch by two inch receiver tube opening. And that's a really common size. So you're going to be able to use a ton of different type of accessories. And since it is heavy duty, it's going to allow us to do some towing as well, if that's what we need it for. The hitch is also going to give us a reinforced collar, not only for extra strength, but I think it's going to look pretty good too. It's going to have the standard 5.8 size pinhole. Now keep in mind, a pin and clip does not come included with the hitch, but if you need one, you can find it here at eTrailer. We're gonna have loop style safety chain openings, which are nice and thick. And to me, that gives me a little extra peace of mind knowing that if a accident were to happen, we can rely on these as backup. And they're gonna give us enough room too to use just about any size hook that we might have. Now, as far as the hitch's weight capacities go, it's gonna have a 600 pound maximum gross tongue weight rating. So that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pushing down on the hitch. That's a pretty high number, and you should be able to use just about any size bike rack or cargo carrier that you would want to. As far as the maximum gross trailer weight rating goes, it's going to be 4,000 pounds. And that's gonna be the amount of weight that's pulling on the hitch. So that's the weight of your trailer plus anything that you might have on it. Now I do always like to point out, it's never a bad idea to check with your CX-5's owner's manual to make sure your Mazda can pull that much weight safely. And if you do plan on doing some towing, I would recommend picking up some trailer wiring. That way the lights on your trailer will match up with the lights on the back of your Mazda and you'll be safe and legal. One thing I did notice is that the hitch is going to give us some pretty good bumper clearance. So what I mean by that is the end of the receiver tube opening is going to sit just behind the bumper. Now if we measure exactly by how much, we're going to go from the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our bumper that's going to be right at four inches. That's a pretty low number, and since many CX-5 owners use a lot of folding accessories, I really don't see the hitch really getting in the way at all as far as being able to fold those accessories up without contacting the back of your Mazda. As far as the ground clearance goes, if you measure from the ground to the top inside edge of the receiver tube opening, it's going to be about 13 and a half inches. So if you do plan on doing some towing, chances are pretty good you're going to need to get a ball mount with a rise. And speaking of those folding accessories, if you're looking for a nice bike rack that'll not only look good but work well with this hitch and your Mazda, I personally like the Thule Hitching Post Pro. But at the end of the day, really the best option as far as I'm concerned for your Mazda CX-5. Not only is it gonna look really good, but it's also going to be extremely versatile. Now, as far as the installation goes, even though the hitch is completely hidden, it's really not gonna be too bad. Everything's easy to get to, and it's relatively straightforward. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and put it on together now. To begin our install, we're gonna be working underneath the back of our Mazda. And the first thing that we're gonna have to do is remove this small plastic trim panel here. It's gonna be held in place by two pushpin style fasteners, just like this. We're gonna have one on each side. To get those out, you can take a flathead screwdriver, pry underneath the head of it, and then you're able to pull that base out completely. Do the same thing for this one over here. And it looks like if we kind of bend it towards us, there's also gonna be a small little clip in there. So you can take your screwdriver and just kind of pry it towards the back of our vehicle like that. And that will allow us to completely lower it so we can set it off to the side. Now we are gonna need to lower our exhaust 
to give us some more room to work. But what I like to do is take a strap and just kind of run it from side to side. That way the exhaust will have a little bit of support and we're gonna be able to kind of control how much and how fast we lower it down. We're gonna have two rubber isolator hangers just like this on each side of our muffler. And those are going to need to be removed because that's what's actually holding our exhaust up. So to make it a little easier, you can spray them down with some soapy water or some lubricant, and that'll just allow it to ease off a little bit better. But the way we get them off, you could take a pry bar or a big flathead screwdriver and just kind of pry one end of the hanger off of the metal portion there. So I have this one off, I'll go to the other side of our muffler and do the same thing. Once we have them removed from the hangers, we can loosen up our strap a little bit and lower the exhaust. Now if you look up at our frame rail on the side of it, we're going to have a little electrical wire with a plastic connector attached to the frame. What we're going to do is just pop that connector out and out of the way. That way we don't have to worry about it interfering with our hitch when we go to put it up. Just take a screwdriver and pop it out. Now from this point on, anything we do to this side of the vehicle, we're also gonna do to the other side because it'll be set up the exact same way. And if we follow our wiring towards the front a little bit, we're also gonna have another plastic clip that we'll take out as well. If we look on the side of our frame rail, we're going to have a little piece of tape here that's covering up a hole that we'll eventually use as an attachment point. So we need to get that tape out of the way. So you can just take a scraper or a flathead screwdriver or something like that. Just kind of work that tape off of the frame rail. Once that's out of the way, if the bottom or side of your frame rail here have this sealer on it, and if it's laid on there thick like this is, we are gonna need to get it down to the bare metal, that way it won't interfere with the hitch. So again, you can just take your scraper, and just work that sealer off until it's nice and clean. Sometimes the sealer can be a little tough to get off, and what I found is just to try a handful of different tools. And it seems sometimes one will work a little bit better than the other. In this case, I found this little trim panel tool. It does the job pretty good. Now to get our hardware into this attachment point, what you're gonna do is take the coiled end of your pole wire, feed it through that smaller hole here in the side. We're gonna drop it out of this larger hole here on the bottom of our frame rail. What we're gonna do is take a spacer block, put that over the pole wire and a carriage bolt. We're gonna thread that carriage bolt onto the pole wire. And we can feed the hardware up into the frame rail and kind of pull on that bolt to get it to come out. So now that we've verified the hardware comes through properly, what I'm gonna do is just barely push that bolt right back inside of the frame. That way when we go to put our hitch up, it's not going to interfere. Our other attachment point is going to be right here underneath this piece of tape again. Pretty much the same setup as the other one. We'll just get that tape removed. And again, if you have any undercoating, 
or sealer along this portion of the frame, we're gonna have to scrape it clean. This area looks pretty clean for me in my case, but right here along this lip, there is some sealer, so I'll go ahead and get that out of the way. Now, even though this attachment point was protected by tape, I do recommend taking a bristle brush and just cleaning out the threads of that weld nut. That way we can make sure we don't have any dirt or debris in there. Once they're cleaned out, the hardware that we're gonna be using once we put our hitch up for this attachment point is a hex bolt and a conical tooth washer. When you put the washer on, you wanna make sure that the teeth on it are going to face this way towards the hitch. Since our hitch is going to kind of sit behind our bumper, what I think will make it a little bit easier is if we remove the push pin on each side of the bumper right here. We'll just take our flathead and pop that out. And that'll allow us to kind of pull back and give us a little more wiggle room. Now we can grab our hitch and on all four of the attachment points, so two on each side here, on the inside of our side plate, we're gonna take a flat washer and tape it to our attachment point. I'm using some packing tape, and so we'll line the holes up. And secure it to the hitch. And this will just make it a lot easier once we actually put the hitch up. That way we don't have to try to line these up and really have to fight it. Once you get it taped, you do want to carefully take an edge and just kind of cut that tape out of the center. That way our bolt can pass through there. Now with an extra set of hands, we'll raise our hitch into position. Go up and over our exhaust. And you actually want the small part of the hitch here to go over your wiring too. And what we're gonna do is push it back and get the holes back here lined up. We'll grab our hardware and just get it started hand tight. That way the hitch will support itself. Now what we can do is grab the end of our pull wire on each side and we're gonna run it through the hitch from the inside out. We'll push it through like that. And take out some of the slack, but not all of it. And then we can push up on our hitch while we're pulling our fascia out. That way the hitch can slide up behind there. So you might have to kind of work it a little bit each side at a time. Once we get it up there, you can pull on the end of your fish wire. And that's going to allow our carriage bolt to pass through our hitch. Once we have it through there, we can remove our pull wire. Then we can grab one of our hex nuts and get those started hand tight on each side as well. With all of the hardware in place and hand tight, now we can come in with the socket and snug it all down. At this point, we can come back with a torque wrench and tighten all of our hardware down to the amount specified in the instructions. So the hitch does come with a couple of zip ties and I use them just to take our wiring and secure it around the back of our hitch here. At this point we can raise our exhaust back into position 
So I just went ahead and re-lubricated the hangers. And this time you can just kind of lift it up and push those hangers back on. And once the exhaust is supporting itself, we can go ahead and remove our strap. And don't forget to move back to the bottom of your bumper and reinstall your push pin fasteners. Now, as far as that little plastic piece that we removed right here a while ago goes, that's not going to fit, so we're not gonna have to worry about reinstalling it. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the eTrailer.com class three trailer hitch receiver on our 2020 Mazda CX-5.